Welcome. We hope this video will ease your concerns as you begin your treatment. In this video, you will find information about your role on your healthcare team and what chemotherapy is and how it can help you. We'll also tell you a bit about what to expect during treatment and go over some of the side effects of chemotherapy and how to manage them. As you watch, it will be helpful to have your chemo packet near you so you can refer to additional materials found inside. You will find note paper in the folder. Grab a pen or pencil so you can take notes and write down any questions you may have. You may also experience challenging emotions as we go through this information. This is normal and your care team is here to help you. Write down your emotions, fears, or concerns to share with us so we can support you. In your chemo packet, you will also find contact information for your clinic, on-call providers, and nurse navigator. Keep this information in a location that is easy to find. For example, hang it on your refrigerator or program it into your phone. And you will see something called a chemotherapy wallet card. Bring this card with you when you visit non-cancer doctors, including if you need to go to the emergency room. I'll talk about this a little more later in the video. First, let's talk about your care team. Your care team includes doctors, nurses, advanced practitioners, nurse navigators, social workers, and genetic counselors. But you are the most important member of this team. It's important for you to become an active participant on the team, to ask questions, and to share your experience with your care providers. It is important that you report any new symptoms you have, and you will need to keep an active list of the medicines you're taking and bring it to each appointment. So, what is chemotherapy? Cancer treatment can include many therapies, including surgery, radiation, and medications. The treatment you receive is determined by the type of cancer you have and the stage, or how advanced it is. One type of medication therapy is chemotherapy, or chemo, as it is sometimes called. Chemotherapy medications are powerful drugs that kill fast-growing cells in your body. There are many kinds of chemo. Depending on the drug, it may be given as a pill, a shot, through an IV, or an infusion. Chemotherapy is usually given in several cycles. A cycle is the time between one round of treatment and the start of the next. The combination of drugs used to treat a cancer is called a regimen. How often you receive a drug will depend on your regimen. Information on the specific drugs you are prescribed and a schedule of your treatment days can be found in your chemo packet. You will go over this information with a member of your care team. If your chemotherapy is given through an IV, it will be done at an infusion center. You may also need to have a special connection surgically implanted in your chest to help deliver the medicine and protect your blood vessels. This connection is called a port cath We usually just call it a port. The port can also be used to give you fluids or blood transfusions and can be used to take samples of blood for testing. You can find more information about ports in your packet. Your chemo treatments are given at an infusion center. Each infusion center is different, but in most cases, you will be in a semi-private area near other patients having similar treatments. There may be curtains that you can pull for some privacy. You can bring one visitor with you to your appointment. Please note that children under the age of 14 are not allowed in the infusion area, and they should not be left on their own in the waiting area. You will need to arrange for childcare before the day of your appointment. When you come to your appointment, wear comfortable clothes. Bring a light jacket, sweater, or blanket in case you get cold. If you have a port, wear a low-cut shirt or a button-down shirt so the nurse can easily get to your port. Plan to be at the infusion center for several hours. It is best to eat a small meal before coming to the center and plan to bring some snacks with you if you would like something more. How long your infusion session lasts depends on which chemotherapy you receive. Since you may be there for a few hours, plan to bring a book or a movie on an electronic device with headphones to help pass the time. Always bring your current list of medications, vitamins, and supplements with you. Be sure to include any inhalers, patches, and injections you are using. It is a good idea to pick up any new prescriptions before your treatment so you will have them available after treatment. If you have a port, one of your prescriptions will be for Emla cream. Put a quarter-sized amount on top of your port do not rub it in, and cover with a small piece of Glad Press and Seal or plastic wrap. After a half hour, the cream will numb your port site so you don't feel pain when the nurse sets up your infusion line. When you arrive at the infusion center, 
A nurse or medical assistant will measure your height and weight and check your vital signs, then take you to the treatment area. There, the infusion nurse will talk with you about your medications, start an IV or access your port, draw blood if needed, and answer any questions you may have. Then, you will meet with your oncologist. They will check to see how you're feeling, review your lab results, and answer any questions you may have. Be sure to report any changes or symptoms you may be having. After meeting with your oncologist, you will go back to the infusion clinic. You may have to wait a bit for your lab results to come back. Depending on the results, your nursing and pharmacy team may need to make adjustments to your medication doses and complete any safety checks. This may take some time, but your safety is most important. Let's talk about how chemotherapy affects your body. Once in your body, the chemotherapy drugs travel through your blood vessels to reach cancer cells in all areas of your body. Because it kills fast-growing cells, it can damage other fast-growing healthy cells, such as the cells in your blood, the cells that make your hair grow, and the cells that line your mouth and digestive tract. Blood is made in your bone marrow, the soft, spongy tissue found in the center of most bones. Blood is made up of many kinds of cells, including white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. A blood count is a lab test that counts the number of cells in the blood sample. It is common to have low blood counts after each cycle of chemotherapy. Most cell counts reach their low point after each chemotherapy cycle. After the cycle, you can expect a recovery period. During recovery, your blood counts are increasing, but may still be lower than normal. This is why we do blood tests frequently during your treatment. This helps us know if it is safe to give you your next dose of chemotherapy. White blood cells are part of your immune or disease-fighting system. When your white blood cell count is low, you have neutropenia. When you have neutropenia, you have a greater chance of getting an infection. Some things you can do to prevent infection include washing your hands often and for at least 20 seconds using soap, and asking the people around you to wash their hands frequently too. You should also shower every day and avoid sick people in large crowds. We recommend that you do not share utensils or drinking glasses with others. It is important that you do not take medicines to lower a fever without your doctor's permission. This includes medicines like aspirin, acetaminophen or Tylenol, ibuprofen, such as Motrin or Advil, or naproxen sodium, also known as Aleve. These medications may mask a fever, making it harder to recognize the signs of infection, including fever. Watch for signs of an infection. Anytime you do not feel well, take your temperature. Make sure you have a digital thermometer at home and that you know how to use it. Call your doctor right away if you have a temperature of 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius or higher. You should also call your doctor if you have other signs of infection such as chills, a cough with yellow or green mucus, a sore throat, or pain when you pee. Because your disease-fighting cells may be low, infections can become very serious very quickly. It is very important that you do not ignore symptoms or delay getting treatment for any possible infection. Call your doctor right away, no matter what time it is. There is always a medical provider on call. If you call during the night or on weekends or holidays, you will get an answering service and the medical provider will call you back shortly. If no one calls you back after 20 minutes, go to the closest emergency room or ER. When you go to the ER, tell them that you had chemotherapy and that you have a fever so they know you need to be seen right away. Show them your chemotherapy wallet card included in your chemo packet. This is an emergency and you need to be seen quickly. To learn more information on neutropenia, see the handout called Neutropenia, Preventing Infections, in your chemo packet. Be sure to ask your care team if you have any questions. Red blood cells are the most common cells in your blood. They carry oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. When your red blood cell count is low, it reduces your body's ability to move oxygen and nutrients to your organs, bones, and tissues. A low red blood cell count is called anemia. It can make you feel very tired or like you have very little energy. To manage these symptoms, try to stay active but take needed rests. Make sure you drink six to eight glasses of water or non-caffeinated drinks daily. Stand slowly and ask for help if you feel lightheaded. Call your doctor or nurse if you are very weak, feel dizzy, feel like you might faint, or feel like your heart is beating very fast. Also call if you're having a hard time breathing or are very pale. If your red blood cell count gets too low, you may need a blood transfusion. 
Platelets are another kind of blood cell. When your platelet levels are lower than normal, your blood can't clot as it should, so you may bleed more easily. The lower your platelet count, the higher your risk for bleeding. Let your doctor know if you're taking blood thinning medications for your heart or a clotting disorder. Do not take aspirin, ibuprofen, or naproxen sodium, since these can also make you bruise or bleed more easily. Avoid activities that may cause bruising or bleeding. Use an electric shaver, not a razor. Use a soft toothbrush when brushing your teeth. Avoid using dental floss and toothpicks that may cause your gums to bleed. Wear shoes or slippers to protect your feet from cuts. Do not strain when pooping. Call your doctor if you bruise easily. Have small red or purple dots on your skin. Have a nosebleed that doesn't stop after 10 minutes. Have pink, red, or brown pee. Have black or bloody poop. Are soaking one or more feminine pads or tampons in an hour or have bleeding that won't stop after applying pressure for 10 minutes. If your platelet count gets too low or you have bleeding problems, you may need a platelet transfusion. I know this is a lot of information to take in, especially when you're sick and nervous about what's next. Be sure to write down any questions or concerns to go over with your care team. In the next video, we will go over some of the side effects that you may have with chemotherapy.